They may have had an uneven start, but these two are relationship goals. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Jake and Amy moments on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I just discovered a new drug too. It's called your relationship and I'm high on it. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the cutest and funniest moments from two of NYPD's finest. As we'll be going over some crucial plot points, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 10. Amy admits she likes Jake When we first met Jake and Amy, they had a friendly but competitive friendship. However, over time, Jake begins to have feelings for his fellow officer. But just when he starts to realize this, she starts dating a cop from another precinct. Nevertheless, it's not long before Amy also starts to see what was right in front of her. Jake books a date for Amy and her boyfriend Teddy, trying to be supportive, and not knowing Amy was planning on breaking up with Teddy. I don't want to see Teddy right now. I'm about to break up with him. Oh, no. The date is, as you might guess, a disaster. There's just no spark between us that's vague. Uh, you're boring. No, that's too harsh. But by the end, Amy must admit where her real feelings lie. It's awkward, but it's also honest. Amy liked you back. Did you? Maybe. Yes. A little. Number nine, romantic styles. I kind of wish something could happen between us. Romantic styles. This entry is pure Peralta. When suspended for continuing a case when he was told to drop it, Jake recruits the help of Amy and Captain Holt to gather more evidence to vindicate him. Throughout the episode, Jake and Amy discuss relationships and the suckiness of breakups. Just saying getting dumped is a nightmare. No arguments here. I remember my worst breakup, eighth grade. Jenny Gildenhorn. After the investigation, which involves an amateur ballroom dancing contest, Jake is asked to go undercover to get close to the Iannucci crime family. However, before he leaves, he's got something to get off his chest. Confessing his feelings for Amy, he tries to keep it light by saying he wished that maybe they could have been something, you know, romantic styles. Number 8. The Jimmy Jab Games Jimmy Jab! Let the games begin! While playing the silly in-office Jimmy Jab games, Jake has a shot to get the number of Rose's friend, as he and Amy have decided to keep their relationship platonic to avoid complicating things. When it becomes clear to Rosa that Jake still likes Amy, she suggests they call off their bet. In the end, Jake lets Amy win to cheer her up. I finally won! Oh, yeah! Yes! Seeing how much Jake cares, even when he thinks he doesn't have a shot, is sweet and a little sad at the same time. I let Amy win. Close, 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 close! Ah! You're right. I'm not over her. Number seven, moving in. You, you have the right, right to, to an attorney. attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, what will be appointed for you? Why did you stop? I'm done. You win. What? what? I love you. I want to move into your apartment. Having gotten serious, Jake and Amy start to talk about taking the next step, moving in together. Amy thinks the obvious choice is to move into her apartment. It's nicer, it's bigger, and it's cleaner. Jake, however, loves his little place and doesn't want to move. When a prison bus overturns, a number of inmates escape. And in classic Jake and Amy fashion, they make it into a contest. Whoever can recapture the most convicts gets to keep their apartment. I hope you like sleeping in a bed with a thousand pillows. Well, I hope you like sharing my one great towel. Was it great when you bought it? I didn't buy it. It was in the apartment when I moved in. It's neck and neck right up to the end, but Jake stops his Miranda rights at the last minute because Amy's happiness is worth more to him than a silly bet. Aw. You're awesome, and you're good at doing things. I mean, sure, I'll miss towel, but your happiness is worth way more than winning some stupid bet. Number six, mattress shopping. the little things in life. In this super cute segment, the couple go shopping for a new mattress because Jake's old one is giving Amy back problems. Also, it's a dumpster mattress. Ugh. Uh, I have a dumpster mattress. All right, that settles it. We're going mattress shopping. Seriously? Finally, they go shopping for something new, testing out the excellent bouncy levels, of course. And even though it's expensive, they decide that making sure one's partner is comfortable is all part of investing in a good relationship. 
It's such a cute scene, and one where their chemistry and compatibility really shows. Adding to cart, signing in as guest, that is not an option. Creating an account. You don't have to buy it right the second. Nope, this is a big romantic gesture and I'm nailing it. Number five, the reunion. Now get to it, you lovebirds. Here we go. Come on, man. How did you get there so fast? Love finds a way. Ugh. Jake, along with Captain Holt, has been in witness protection for over six months and unable to contact Amy during that time. However, when Jake thinks he has a chance to take down Jimmy Figgis, he contacts the 9-9 to come and help. Oh, uh, Jake! Uh, uh, so good to see you! Uh. When Amy arrives, it's awkward at first for the two, as they're not sure how to act around each other anymore. But as they relax back into themselves, and after Amy shoots Jake in the leg, in order to save him from Figgis, they realize that even with time and distance, nothing has changed. I know this is weird to say because I just shot you, but it feels like we're back in sync now. Yeah, I mean, as in sync as I've ever been with someone who just shot me. <laughs> Number four, the first I love you and love you too. Thank you for doing this. I love you. Noise. Smart. Jake and Amy decide that it's time that they went on their first vacation together. For their trip, they decide to take a cruise. Say, I love Carousel Cruises International LTD. I love Carousel Cruises International Limited. I don't want to say that. While Amy has a meticulous list of activities scheduled, their plans are interrupted when they run into an old foe, Doug Judy, the Pontiac Bandit. He needs their help to escape from an assassin, but after the assassin is taken down and Judy eludes capture again, they can finally enjoy their holiday. During salsa dancing, Amy tells Jake those three little words. He fumbles at first, trying to play it casual, but when Amy is clearly let down, he wises up and tells her he loves her too. I love you too. Number three, the first kiss. Oh crap, he saw us. In order to get close to one of the city's most infamous identity thieves, Jake and Amy go undercover as Johnny and Dora, a newly engaged couple. However, they not only get closer to their target, but to each other. To play the part and distract from their obvious spying, they lock lips not once, but twice. Jake, Jake. there's a difference, Amy. Nope, Jake, he's looking at us. What well, is happening? Huh? Their investigation pays off, but back at the precinct, things are awkward. They try to laugh it off, with Peralta engaging in some uncomfortable, super casual flirting as they together decide to keep it professional. But later downstairs in the evidence locker, they just can't hold back, and they share their first real kiss. So a lot of change around here, huh? Number two, the bet date. Do this mini! I hate your guts! Channel that passion into the dance! If there's one thing that's always defined the Jake and Amy relationship, it's their love of bets and their competitive natures. Midway through season one, Jake is still treating Amy just like another pal, and their ongoing bet about who can bag the most bad guys is nearly over. At the last second, much to Amy's chagrin, Jake wins. After losing, Amy has to go on the worst date with Jake. During their ridiculous date, they get called out on a last-minute stakeout. There they begin to bond when things turn from teasing to play. Jake begins to see Amy in a different light and develop real and unexpected feelings for her. Um, you know, Captain, hold off on the relief team. We're already here. Plus, I'm curious to see what happens. Number one, their wedding. Ever since Jake proposed to Amy, we've waited with bated breath for them to finally tie the knot. But not even Amy's meticulous organization skills or Jake's groom gut could prepare them for the bombshells and literal bombs they had to deal with to get there. From a vindictive criminal planting a bomb at their wedding to Teddy still being hung up on Amy or Cheddar eating the cake, there was a lot working against them. Though Jake and Amy are content to get married at City Hall, Boyle isn't happy with anything other than the grandiose. Jake and Amy are getting married tonight. Title of my sex tape. What? Whoa, yeah, whoa, wait, I got a lot of work, a lot of work. Whoa, give me a hour. With gorgeous lights adorning the outside of the precinct, Holt officiates and Jake and Amy exchange heartfelt vows. Life is unpredictable. Not everything's in our control, but as long as you're with the right people, you can handle anything. And you, Jake Peralta, 
are the right person for me. The wedding turned out to have everything we could have wanted. Robot ring bearer and all. But I do have some bad news. There is a bomb at this wedding as well. What? Your butt. Your butt is the bomb. There will be no survivors. I love you so much. You're my dream girl. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.